Welcome to another edition of ATL Prime Sports. I'm JJ Jurjevic. Joining me is the one, the only Wayne from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm filling in for Todd Quarter. And again, this is ATL Prime Sports. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at ATL Prime Sports. Find myself, JJ, at JJ Get You One. You can find my fabulous producer, Wayne, to my right over here at RWY Jr. And it's, again, all on Twitter right here. And at Quarter Todd, Todd Quarter, who I'm filling in for tonight. How's everybody doing, Wayne? You doing all right? Yeah, it's starting to warm up around here. Uh, my morning bike ride was about five miles long, and uh, it's getting to be a whole, even humid that early in the morning. So I'm having to sweat it out uh, first thing in the morning. It's starting to get muggy down here. Looks like uh, the the mild summer is behind us, and the and the the hot stuff is coming on. And I'm doing just fine. Again, folks, if you like these videos, please give us a like, give us a subscribe on YouTube. You can find us again on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Click the links. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Let's start this thing off with what's on tap with the show today. The Hawks are down, but are they out around the Horn in Major League Baseball? And a lot right here on ATL Prime Sports. Let's go ahead and jump into the first topic. It is the Atlanta Hawks. They lost game three of the Eastern Conference Finals, 113-102 in State Farm Arena. Let's talk about Eastern Conference Finals, Wayne. This is ATL Prime Sports, so let's talk about them. See what 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 went what went wrong for the Hawks in games two and three, Wayne? I'll, I'll I'll tee this thing off with you, man. Well, I think part of part of the issue was I I really think they had planned on not playing to their full potential in game two, and I think it zapped a little bit of their momentum going into game three. They really should play every single game as if they want to win instead of saying, "Hey, let's save a little." We'll go back to Atlanta. We'll do well. I get the idea. That's what they did in game two, because that's the only way you can explain by losing as much as they did. Uh, and like I said, it just affected their momentum once they got back home. That's my opinion. Hey, that's not a bad opinion. I mean, they were at one point down 41 points in that game two loss. Uh, they ended up getting uh, getting back uh, within a 20 something points. I think it was 125 91 was the final. So they, they got back within 30 points there, kind of clawed their way back. Kim Reddish got some value minute valuable minutes in that game. Um, but you know, what went wrong for the Hawks in game two? Hawks didn't execute on offense or defense, got whooped on the glass. Scoreboard represented itself in that situation. Game three, Hawks played a lot better. Uh, small forward Chris Middleton scored a uh, well, tied a career high, a playoff career high though, 38 points. 20 of those Wayne, 20 of those 38 points in that fourth frame there. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo added 33 points on 13 of 22 of shooting. He also had 11 rebounds and four assists. That's why they lost. They they let Chris Middleton in Game Three. You got to uh, rely on if you're the Hawks, you got to shut down one of those two players. If you can shut down one, hopefully the other doesn't beat you. And that's exactly what the Hawks did not do in game three. They let Antipopo, the Greek freak, get 33. They let Middleton get 38, and they both grabbed 11 boards. So that was what happened in games two. Now, what's the status of straight Trey Young? We all saw him go down and uh, put that about a minute left in that third period. Stepping on referee Sean Wright's ankle, twisting his own. Trey Young did suffer a bone bruise in that game three loss to Moore and is officially questionable for game four Tuesday night. That is huge news. Your first reaction to watching the game Sunday evening and seeing that injury happen. Well, I didn't I didn't get to see that specific injury happen, but I did get to see his uh lack of three-point production uh in game 2, which started, you know, making me think oh, they're just they're not playing to their full potential. And 
you know, game three, he he didn't shoot as well. And now it makes me wonder, have they waited too long to figure out a way to play without relying on his uh, scoring? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have to figure out a way to win with Trey Young not being a hundred percent. You mentioned the way they shot the ball; they shot the three pointer fairly well, and that's one of the keys to uh, you'll hear later on in this segment right here. But they did shoot the ball at over forty percent uh, Sunday evening, so they did have a shot to win that game just stripped by the three. But they didn't make their free throws, Wayne. They didn't play down defense in the last six seven minutes of that ball game played about 41 good minutes of basketball you need to play about 46 or 47 like Shaquille O'Neal said on inside the NBA on Sunday night so again Trey Young folks questionable going into game four we'll see what happens how he comes off that ankle again he suffered the injury in the third quarter when he missed a shot he stepped back awkwardly and when he did he stepped on the referee he only scored once the rest of the game, which was a three-pointer to take a one-point lead in the fourth quarter, but that obviously wasn't enough. Can the Hawks come back, and how do they do it? I'll start this one off, Wayne. Yes, but Trey must be healthy. If Trey's not healthy, the Hawks aren't going to be as explosive as they possibly can be because he is their scorer and their playmaker. A uh, very awkward situation going back to the injury. I'm um, speaking because Trey Young must be healthy for them to win. I do not think they have much of a shot in this series any longer, especially with that status coming out. A very awkward injury. I don't think I've ever seen an injury uh, like this where the referee was involved. I don't know if the referee was in position or out of position. Folks, if you're an NBA referee, a basketball referee, please comment on this video. Give us a tweet at eight. I'm sports. Let us know what you think if that was, in fact, a referee out of position or did Trey just step back too far and hurt himself? So, again, moving forward, can they come back? Yes, Trey must be healthy. Uh, they got to make their three point, got to play good defense. They got to get more people involved. And that's what Trey Young's going to have to do. In game one, when he had 48 points, 11 assists. In the two losses, he's had a combined seven assists. So you got to get Trey moving the ball around to other players. Like, look, in game one in the win, John Collins had 23. Capella had 12. Herter had 13. And then you had, of course, Trey Young with 48. That's what you're going to need if the Hawks want to come back and win this series. Again, you're going to need a healthy Trey Young. Hopefully, he can get the treatment he needs and that bone bruise can show some uh, signs of improvement before the next game. Tuesday night on TNT. So again, Wayne, I'll throw it to you. Do you think the Hawks could back, and how do they do it? Well, I th I think they they do have a chance, but then I'm a real optimistic guy. Uh, I will say this though, <laughs> it's not it's not all down to the Hawks not playing well or being injured. A lot of credit has to go to Milwaukee for playing the game that they're playing because uh, you know I don't want to sound like a uh, Nick Saban, who's all the time blaming your own team for the loss. Sometimes there are better teams out there, and uh, Milwaukee really is playing up to their expectations. Yeah, you're you're right about that. My final thought on this is Milwaukee came in here. We all expected them to be the better team. The experts said four or five games. It's starting to look just like the experts predicted. Yeah. But again, the Hawks had him on the ropes. A healthy Trey Young may change this series. These Hawks are young. These Hawks are hungry. They will be back next year. Watch it. Mark it down. The Hawks could be here. You heard well, it here I'm first on at ATL Prime Sports. Folks, again, if you like these videos, we do this for fun. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. And continue to give us some love. All right, folks, moving in, rolling into topic number two, we are going to go around the horn in Major League Baseball. Well, we're not going to, we're not going to sugarcoat it. This is around the horn in Major League Baseball. I'll start off with my boy, Wayne, your team out there in Arlington, Texas. Not a lot to cheer for lately, except for three consecutive wins. Well, against, against Kansas City. You know, but overall, 
30 and 48, you're fifth in the AL West. Not looking too good, but I figured we'd go around the horn and we'd start with none other than your Texas Rangers, Wayne. Your comments on well, well, they they I think they are what uh, everybody expected. Uh, they are what everybody expected them to be this year. They started off a little bit of steam, and I had some hope, but they've slipped right back to what everybody expected. Uh, you know, my the other team that I I've always kind of liked is uh, Chicago White Sox, and so I may have to start uh, shifting a little bit after the All Star break, and start following them and uh, pulling for them a little bit because I I really think they've got a great team this year. Yeah, the White Sox do have a great team led by manager Tony La Russa, who loves those unwritten, unbroken, unspoken rules, you know. <laughs> so watch out if you join them. No, nah, I'm just playing. Yeah. But you're right. Going back to the Texas Rangers, they're 18 games back of the first place Houston Astros. It's getting late early in Arlington. Opponents batting average 264. Rangers team batting average. 233. That doesn't equal for a good season, folks. Wayne, any final thoughts on your Texas Rangers, or you want to move on to uh, the second topic of our MLB roundtable? Well, I tell you, they, they've got a great uh, stadium out there. You've been there. You've seen it. You know what it looks like. So that's the that's the big positive. they got a great stadium. Absolutely. they're at a, And the Braves and our Rangers are at right. 100% capacity right. still. It's great to see. So – you got 100% capacity at a, one of the newer ballparks in, in Major League Baseball, folks. It's Globe Life Field, Globe Life Stadium. I can't remember which one, but it is Globe Life. And it is absolutely, and I say it once, twice I'll say it a third time, retractable dome. You need that out there in Arlington with that dry heat and a little bit of humidity mixed in. So on those midsummer days, like right now, when you're getting 100-degree heat in a baseball game, absolutely a beautiful stadium. So you're right. Hats off to the Texas Rangers in a great new facility. We'll go on to our second topic. And it finally happened, Wayne. It finally happened. The first substance check to come yeah. and cause an ejection. Your thoughts on that? That was very unique. Yeah. I, every time I see them out there, you know, uh, checking the, the pitcher, I, I said this to you online that I, I'm, I'm looking for – I'm looking for one of those emery boards to magically fly onto the ground. Uh, you know, I'm doing uh, the check right now, Wayne, uh, while you're talking. Well, My you remember that? Are clean, you remember that folks. A couple, I think it was about uh, what 10, 20 years ago. Uh, the guy was using an emery board to shave the ball, and they went out Absolutely. to check it. And it, and he like he like he's looking around and he threw the emery board. I'm half expecting to see an emery board fly out of somebody's hand. If I'm yeah, not mistaken, it was the Braves' own Phil Necro who had yeah. the emery board in it. And it was to file his nails, he said, to yeah. stick into the ball better so he could throw a better knuckleball. Folks, if you have an emery board in your file now, yeah. oh boy, you're going to have a 10 day paid vacation for it. Yeah. Folks, if you haven't seen the news, the first ejection due to a foreign substance check occurred and with Seattle Mariners relief pitcher Hector Santiago became the first pitcher to get tossed. Uh, he was ejected in the fifth inning of Sunday's doubleheader after umpires inspected his glove. Santiago said it was only rosin. Uh, don't think the substance really out a lot. Uh, he gave up two walks and gave up two hits in the inning. So I don't really know uh, what it was doing, but if it turns out to be just rosin, uh, and, and, and he says, it, it sounds like a legit excuse. He says he puts it in the glove to prevent the sweat from rolling down his, uh, rolling down his hand. Folks, it sounds legit to me. It may have just been rosin. We'll have to pay attention to that. It was the first ejection for a foreign substance check in major league baseball this year. Uh, I don't think it'll be the last. I think you'll see a couple more guys probably get caught and, uh, maybe you'll, Pitchers uh, play by the rules. What do you think, Wayne? Any final thoughts on the first ejection from a substance uh, substance check? Foreign substance gonna, check. Yeah, if they're going to be kicking people out of the game, they're going to have to find something more substantial than that. I mean, you're going to have to have big goops of uh, Vaseline on your uh, hat or, you know, an obvious thing. They can't really get somebody for something smudged on the glove like that that could hardly be transferred, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I agree. I, and, and, and they need to be able to figure out what it is uh, in between innings. If you do the check, they need to figure out what the substance is, have a test, or have a an expert, for se. They just need to do something to tell you what it is. Because if it isn't a illegal substance, then you should be able to put it inside your glove if it is just rosin. Let's go to the uh, hey, final I, topic. I got, go ahead. Got, one more thing about that. Sure. Uh, sure. And I'm going to compare this to uh, automobile racing. Uh, in automobile racing, especially Formula One, if you yeah. go off yeah. of the track and you return to the track and you've improved your position, they make you just give that position back. Uh, I would say that if they find a substance on a uh, anything on a pitcher, if it hasn't improved his game, if he's still pitching terrible, then <laughs> uh, you know you've gained no advantage of that. So I'd say it's no big deal. No, I agree with that. That's that's uh, p- that that may be a way to police the situation later on. I mean, if he's given up three home runs, what does spider tack matter? Right. Let's move on to the third and final major league baseball around the horn topic, and it is about the All Star Game. Houston Astros lead the way. The seven major league All Star finalists. The Braves have three. There are three teams that had five finalists that are the Dodgers, Blue Jays, and the Cubs. Excuse me, they are the Dodgers, Blue Jays, and the Cubs. Braves had three, Ozzy Albies, Nola Cunha Jr., and Freddie Freeman as finalists. Speaking of the Braves, they're five games back of the Mets, eight and a half, eight point five, eight in out of the wild card spots of San Diego and the LA Dodgers. So, Wayne, what do you think about the All-Star game and uh, who could possibly be in it? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't think Texas has anybody in there, do they? I mean, so, <laughs> I, again, it's something I, I'm, I'm looking for five games after the All-Star break to decide which teams I think are going to be making it to the uh, wild card. Because I think by then they should have some sort of plan or act together moving forward. Uh, and really, I'm just using this all-star break as kind of a, a, a waypoint in the season. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And some of the leading vote-getters, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., over 2,700,000 votes. Atlanta's own Ronald Acuna Jr., over 2,500,000 votes. Salvador Perez, the Kansas City Royals, uh, over 2.1 million votes, of course. Mike Trout and Fernando Tatis Jr. roll out the top five leading vote getters in Major League Baseball. And you can vote on these uh, finalist folks until Thursday afternoon. So go vote in your favorite All Star. Back um, to the All Star game news. The game will be played July 13th at Coors Field. In the old 5280 Denver, Colorado. Again, vote for your favorite finalists until this Thursday. Let's go on to our third and final topic of the evening, and we'll get into our ATL Prime Sports No Huddle headlines. College football is getting closer, Wayne. Yes. Let's do real quick. What are some games that you're looking forward to that may spark your interest week one, week two of the season? I'm going to stick with week one. If you want to go farther into the season, you're more than welcome. But I'm excited. We're going to have a normal season. We're going to have fans in the sea, uh, in, in the stands. Looks like we'll have packed houses in the SEC. Got some sweet matchups week one. I'm looking forward to what you're saying. I know your Memphis Tigers yeah. are uh, playing home to Nichols State yeah, or Nichols. Game. And uh, they gave – for their money a couple years back, if you remember that. From, um, I think that was Kirby Smart's first year as a head coach, gave him some problems. But uh, what games are you looking forward to, Wayne? Well, uh, I'm, I, because, uh, you know, I, I feel like we get this connection with the um, uh, Sunbelt Conference, I'm looking to see what Memphis is going to do with Arkansas State uh, at Arkansas State for the second game. Uh, if my – yeah, I, I really think they're going to allow the marching band for Memphis to travel. So that'll be my son's first away game that he'll have to travel to. And um, it, it'll awesome. kind of give it'll kind of give the Georgia State folks an idea of what to expect from Arkansas State when they play Memphis. Absolutely, absolutely. So we know you're looking forward to that. So here's a couple I'm looking forward to. Nick Saban versus 
Miami at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. I know Georgia State fans are excited. They got a big football program coming into Georgia State Stadium. That's Army at Georgia State week one. Dave Dave Cohen will have on talking about that momentarily. In a couple uh, – not, not obviously, I should say momentarily. In a couple weeks, uh, Texas right. Tech versus Houston should be a – Really high-scoring, fun game, um, opening week, uh, in-state battle there. UGA Clemson should be a top-five matchup. Dabo versus Kirby. It's going to be 7:30 on national TV, BC, and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets open up at home against Northern Illinois on the ACC Network. Those are some games. There's some other ones in there mixed in. Uh, but but these are the ones I'm kind of the most exciting for. And, and the one that sticks out like a sore thumb has got to be the Georgia versus Clemson game. And we'll break that down here on ATL Prime Sports in the months upcoming. But this should be one of the biggest games of the opening weekend slash season. And this may be a game you circle on the calendar and say, really change the outcome of the college football playoffs. Wayne, any other games you're looking forward to week one, week two, early in the season, uh, well, college football you know, this year? Uh, uh, Gus Malzahn is now down there in Central Florida in Orlando, and they open up the season against Boise State. And it's going to be interesting to see, you know, is he going to continue the program they've got there or is he going to try to implement his own thing? Uh, it'll be a big change for the uh, uh, American Conference uh, with him in there. Absolutely. A couple other matchups to look out for. I'm really looking for row the boat, Minnesota versus Ohio State. A couple years yep. back, we saw Minnesota break out, almost win the Big Ten championship, almost get into that national championship recognition, college football playoffs type stage. Came up short last year, had a bad year. Let's see if they can get the boat rowing. They open up against Ohio State. That should be a fun game as well. Uh, Wayne, any final thoughts on uh, football right around the corner? Intriguing games to open up the season. Lots of new coaches in the uh, SEC, so we'll see what they can do. Absolutely. Another great point. New coaches everywhere should have, uh, again, folks in the stands, uh, meat burning in the parking lot and tailgates, beer getting drank. Should be a fun season. I'm looking right. forward to it. Never going to take college football for granted again, folks. I'll never do it. I'll never do it. I think I ever and did. I want to shout out the Croatian national team in the Euro Cup 2020 and 2021. Had a great comeback today. Fell short against the Spaniards. But, boy, they were down 3-1 to one with about 10 minutes to play and put it in the extra and tied it up too quick. That was fun to watch. Uh, I yeah. just wanted to shout out. My nationality, my team right quick. That was fun to watch today. Moving on to the no huddle headlines here on ATL Prime Sports. Stanley Cup Finals are underway. The defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning facing off first the Cinderella of the NHL, the Montreal Canadiens. Canadiens were fourth in their division. Made it this far. Great story. I love underdogs. Go Canadians. Yeah. Wayne, your thoughts? I'm not too much of a fan of Montreal, so, you know, being a, a, a Leafs fan, I it's, you know, I, I may have to pull for Tampa Bay in this one. <laughs> Understood. Understood. And our last ATL new huddle headline comes back to a local, a four-time Pro Bowler wide receiver hangs up the Cleveland 2010 first-round pick, 22nd overall to the Denver Broncos. Georgia Tech alum Dem Thomas retired from the NFL on Monday. He will retire as Denver's second leading wide receiver behind Rod Smith. Pretty interesting stuff. So hats off to a great career, Demarius Bebe Thomas, as they call him. He was a fantasy football stud. He was yeah. always drafted. He was always rostered, and he was always played. Hats off to you, Bebe. Smart athlete, great player. Georgia Tech, Yellow Jacket. Wayne, your thoughts on a, a great career for Demarius Thomas? I'm anxious to see what he's going to do next. You know, it's it, he's got a kind of a wide open thing. You know, is he going to just try to stay local? Is he going to try to do something bigger? Or is he going to relax and go fishing? <laughs> Time will tell. Well, folks, that's been a great show. That's our ATO Prime Sports 
show today. We are live on Fridays on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports from 1 until 1.30. You can dial us up at 347-205-9631. Any closing thoughts, Wayne, on the show tonight? No, I'm ready for college football, like you said, and I'm also ready to see if uh, – or I'm going to predict that Atlanta's going to bounce back. I, I really think they are. But that's – you know, maybe – I hope they do. Up. I hope Trey Young's healthy enough to put it in six. Uh, I just hope it's not a gentleman's sweep, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Again, you can like our videos at ATL Prime Sports on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We'll see you Friday, folks. For Wayne on my right. For Todd Quarter, who's on vacation, I'm J.J. Jurjevich. See you Friday, folks. Get you one.